All right, I see the participants joining now. It's great. Welcome, everybody. I see you guys coming in. I was just sharing with, uh, with uh, uh, our panelists that we had about 65 people registered when I checked uh, earlier today. So that number may have gone up, which is great. It's a great, uh, a great response. And uh, so many of those uh, 65 are joining now. And I'm sure some of you who are watching are, you know, cooking dinner or eating dinner. Uh, maybe you're exercising uh, or maybe, you know, maybe you're cleaning up around the house um, or maybe you're, you're actually sitting in front of a screen like we are watching the, uh, the webinar today. But uh, we just appreciate you blocking out uh, a few minutes on a Friday night to uh, join with us. Uh, it's my hope that uh, you will be encouraged. I was just talking with our panelists today about how I was encouraged when I was on uh, Early on in my marriage, about two years in, hearing another couple telling me that uh, they, who I highly respected, who were in the church, saying that they had a fight that morning on their way to church. And I remember looking at them thinking, you guys had a fight? I thought you guys, <laughs> you know, would have worked through all that already by the time, you know, you get to 20, 25 years of marriage. And it just made me feel so normal. I felt great. So uh, you're going to hear some stories today from, uh, from our panelists who are here. I'm going to introduce them in just a few minutes. I just want to allow a few more minutes for our attendees to jump on. So, uh, Dean, you wanna greet? Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. I know uh, Friday's a big day because it's been a long week for most of you, whether it's been work or school or whatever you have on your plate. So thank you for joining us. Um, but as Pastor George said, this, we hope to keep this casual. So grab a cup of coffee or tea and just join with us as we spend a little time together. We'd love to be sitting across from you in person, but since we can't, uh, this is the next best thing. So uh, just wanted to give you guys a warm greeting. Hope all is well with your week. I'm sure um, everyone's story would be as different than the next <laughs> with adventures and <laughs> Thank you, Adine. And so as our, pan uh, our participants are joining right now, I just want to um, introduce Cassie Hagar, who is on the other side of the Bethel logo. Uh, she is going to be running the uh, show. She's our host tonight, helping with the, uh, the back end support on the Zoom meeting. And so she'll be uh, helping us there as well as later on in our, uh, our Zoom uh, webinar, we're going to have a Q&A session. And so we'll introduce that and you'll be able to ask some questions and you can, uh, you can direct those to a particular panelist um, or you can just post it up there and any of the panelists who see that can jump in and answer that question. That'll be at the tail end of our webinar today. And so I'm gonna introduce our panelists here at this time. And so uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce uh, Josh and Mandy Cantrell, you wave there, good. So Josh and Mandy, uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves, you know, like, you know, how long you've been married, uh, how many children you have, uh, are you working from home, Who do you, what kind of jobs do you do? So uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to all of our participants today. It'll be our pleasure. Uh, good evening, Bethel family. Thanks for having us today and uh, taking the time. Um, we've been married since 2007, happily so. We have two children. Uh, we got lucky. We wanted a boy and a girl, and we got a boy and a girl. Um, our son is about to turn 11 years old in a couple of weeks here, and our daughter is eight. So going on 16. Yeah, she's definitely, definitely the older soul of the two. <laughs> that's for sure. But um, we've lived in Campbell since 2007. Yeah. We came to Bethel by way of the merger with the Santa Clara campus a couple of years back. And let's see here, I am a sales manager for a due diligence real estate product. I manage a, a sales team of 30 people throughout the state of California. I've been with my current employer for about 18 years, I wanna say, so quite some time. I am, I work part-time now. I'm a legal assistant for a small firm uh, locally and am now working from home most days uh, with the kids doing school. And uh, how long have I been doing? I've been with my current firm since Devaney turned one. So about seven years, almost, almost eight now. Um, and in the industry for about eight, 18, about the same time as Josh has been as well. So 
um, yeah, that's us. We we serve on the mm -hmm. greeting team. We haven't been since COVID, but prior to, sure. to COVID, we, we were serving on the outdoor greeting team and we miss it very much and seeing everybody. Um, before that, we both, I served in um, children's ministry and I helped with the three-year-old class, which was lots of fun. And Josh was on the security team at that it time, was. but now he um, he's dabbled in a couple of other areas. Yeah, a couple of committees, just when, when called upon, willing to serve. That's kind of my mantra. So whatever you need, I try to help out. Yeah. But I think that's it. That's us in a nutshell. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for sharing that part of, of your story with us. And, and those of you who are watching uh, <laughs> online, I'm sure you recognize Josh and Mandy were the first people that you would see as you walk into the church building. So, awesome. and uh, our other panelists that we have with us today are Leo and Jacqueline Wong. And so, Leo and Jacqueline, thank you so much for joining us and being panelists with us today and sharing your story. Uh, introduce yourself to our uh, participants today. It's our pleasure. Um, my name is Leo. And this is my wife, Jacqueline. We've been married since 2013. So our seventh uh, anniversary is coming up in uh, a, month. a month. Yeah, I better get that date right. Um, uh, <laughs> I know. Um, so I've uh, we've been to Bathel since the uh, beginning of 2019. Yeah, so it's... Um, almost two years now, but feel like a year because obviously we spent six months at home. Uh, um, and I, um, I work as a sales operations manager at a, a cybersecurity company uh, in Sunnyvale, um, a supporting sales team. Um, and my wife used to own her own business um, before we got married and she was living overseas. And now she stays at home. Uh, she's a stay home mom, which is, she has the most important job in the world, in my opinion, and the hardest job in the world. What do you serve in the church? Oh yeah, um, I we we both serve in the in the worship team uh, alongside um, a dean. Uh, my wife also serves on the intercessor team um, every Thursday, every other Thursday, um, praying for the church, for the community, for uh, for the country, and for the world. Oh, what about our kids? Oh yeah, we got two kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love oh, yeah, that. Them. We got two kids. Yeah, there's there's that part. Um, so we have a three. We have we have two kids. We have a boy, a, a girl, and a boy. Um, our daughter is three and a half, and our son is six months. So we're uh, we're going through some grinding times right now with teething and things like that. So fun. it's exciting. <laughs> fun times. Good. Yeah. Thank you so much, Leo and Jacqueline, for introducing yourselves. And like, like Leo said, he's on the worship team, so I'm sure you've seen him up there, um, you know, helping us lead worship. It's great to have a, you know, strong male voice up on a worship team. Thank you, Leo, for doing that. And Jacqueline, thank you for praying. I still remember Jacqueline when she first came to Bethel, you know, pulling me aside in the lobby and, and praying for me. And I really appreciate that, Jacqueline. I think about that day a lot because it, it was a much needed prayer that you prayed over me. And I appreciate your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and for your participation on that prayer team, too. So, and praying for a pasta. Oh, no way. <laughs> we're just people. And uh, so, speaking of just people, Dean and I are, um, we've been married for about 25 years. And um, we have three. Well, you know what? I'm going to be doing a lot of talking today. So, I'll let a Dean introduce ourselves, okay? Yep. So we've actually been married 26 years. <laughs> Obviously, 25 good ones for him, 26 good ones for me. <laughs> uh, we have three boys. They are all college age, uh, 19, 20, 21. We have them back to back. Uh, they are all studying from home right now at their respective colleges and universities. Uh, we also uh, have my mom living with us after my dad passed away. About five years ago, she moved in with us. Uh, so we have multi-generations here in the house, six people during this time. So it has been exciting uh, to say the least. So, yeah. And all six of us on the internet at the same time, my, my mother-in-law, Billy, uh, those of you who are watching, she's very involved in church as well, and with the seniors group and the Grief Share Group and Women's Ministry Group, Intercessory Prayer Group. And so she's on Zoom calls a lot too. 
So I've had to upgrade my internet two times since uh, <laughs> since shelter in place. And so it uh, seems like it's never enough, but all right. Well, thank you for introducing yourselves and to our, to our panel, to our participants today. What I'd like to do is I'd like to start off our webinar today with a couple of questions for those who are participating with us to be able to give us a little bit of feedback about your situation and, and where you're at. And so Cassie's got uh, three polls that we're going to do, real simple polls that you can uh, click on. And again, I know some of you will be cooking or you know on a, on a phone. Maybe this won't be as easy. So if you're not able to do it easily, don't worry about it. Uh, we do have a random prize coming up for those of you who pre-registered and you won't need to participate in the poll to win that prize. But uh, <laughs> we just like to see um, uh, a little bit of who's on the call today. So first question is how many years have you been married? Um, I know that uh, we invited those who were not engaged or maybe even not dating, but would like to you know, prepare for marriage. And so we often have many who are dating or thinking about starting to date, participate with our, uh, our, our, our webinars and our classes. And so that's why we included that there, but let's go ahead and get that poll back up there. Probably talking too much, Cassie. So um, let's get the poll back up. All right, go ahead and, and let us know how many years you've been married. Oh, I can't vote? That's what it says in red there. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That means we can't win any prizes. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that's enough time there, Cassie. All right. Looks like we have uh, a, a one engaged couple on. That's great. Congratulations. Hey, congratulations. Those of you who are engaged, <laughs> congratulations on your engagement. Uh, we have uh, uh, several who are in their first five years of marriage. Yeah, honeymooners there. <laughs> uh, those who, we have a few who are in their, uh, uh, what I would call the middle marriage, the six to 20 years there. Found your rhythm, maybe have some kids. Uh, so working out some kinks there. And then we have uh, several who are 21 years and up in marriage. I call that the reward years. So those of you who are in the reward years, uh, that's, that's the time where you get rewarded for all the hard work you put into your marriage. It comes at the year 21. So good. All right, let's see the next poll, Cassie. Uh, who works from home? Uh, just three questions here. Uh, either both spouses are working from home, only one spouse, or neither spouse is working from home. Just curious. All right, I think that's enough time, Cassie. Pretty even. Yeah, spread out quite a bit. That's great. I think all of you will find something beneficial today in our webinar today. You'll find something you can use. Good. Let's see the last poll up there, Cassie. Uh, how about any children learning from home? Check all that apply. All right, let's see the answers on that one, Cassie. Uh, no children learning from home. So that's uh, most of our participants, but then we have several who have middle school, high school, and college. Uh, again, a good mix here with us today. All right, well, now it's time for the prize drawing. So Cassie's got a wheel she's going to throw up. This is a random prize drawing. Those of you who spent oh, oh, fancy. Yeah, to, to <laughs> register before. Uh, the webinar on Wednesday. Your names are up there. So, uh, is that spinning already? Let's let's see where that lands. This is for a twenty dollars Starbucks gift card. Oh, Noelia! Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Noelia. I know this is going to support your habit. Look at it, habit. All right. Thank you, Cassie. Okay, we're ready to jump into our webinar now. And so, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have um, our panelists here are gonna be sharing their stories. 
they've uh, they've shared some of their stories with me already, uh, and I want to pre- say thank you so much for sending those emails to me. But um, we're hoping that those of you who are on the call today, you'll learn something from their experiences. They're going to be transparent with some of the things that they're dealing with, with working from home. COVID-19 um, kind of just sprung out of nowhere back in March, and uh, it's lasted longer than I think most people would have anticipated. We've had to, you know, continue to adjust and pivot and find new ways of um, of working out of the house and you know, it's put some strain on a lot of marriages. It puts some strain on parenting relationships. And, um, and so we, I, uh, we have, you know, in our home, we have three generations. I think Leo and Jacqueline also mentioned they have three generations living in their home as well. And so the relationship dynamics are challenging, but um, you know, we can, we can learn from each other tonight. And that's my hope is that from sharing each other's experiences, you'll have some tools and some ideas to be able to apply uh, in your home. And maybe if it's not even your home, maybe you'll be able to apply it in other relationships that you have. Maybe you have children who are working from home or grandchildren working from home or studying from home. And so um, hopefully this will be really beneficial for you today. And so uh, first question I'd like to um, direct to Leo and Jacqueline. And so Leo and Jacqueline, in the, in the email that you had sent to me, um, you know, you had said that you're working from home and that uh, uh, you've had, you know, to navigate through that and find ways to, to, to set those boundaries in place with the different relationships that you have. And so why don't you share with, uh, with those who are here tonight the, the challenge that you found working from home and as it relates to different relationships there, as well as the solution that is working for you right now. Um, yeah, and, and I think, you know, by no means I've got this and, and, and in fact, when we were, um, you know, answering your questions uh, yesterday uh, or Wednesday, uh, my wife's like, well, you didn't, you know, you're not really doing that well on, the, from, on that area. <laughs> like, yeah, I know that. I know that. Thank you. But, yeah. but I think, you know, it's, it's also a good reminder for, for everyone. And, and the challenge is real, right? It's, it's, it's something that we have to deal with um, every day. Um, so what I try to do is to try to set some time apart and just disconnect because it's, it's really hard. It just all blends in now. Um, the day kind of blends in, the, the time blends in. It's, it's like, what day is it? Is it Friday? Oh, it's just another day, right? Before you can clearly distinguish your weeks, your weekdays and your weekend, but now it's all blur. <laughs> it's all the same. So what I have to, and I struggle to do is to disconnect and just try some time to, to have some time with, be with my family. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard, I think for every job, but in particular my job, because I, I work with a lot of salespeople and they're, um, they're always on, they're always, um, you know, had their foot on the gas pedal every, every minute. So, and I work with a lot of high executives too. So the, their schedules are crazy. So I kind of have to work along with their schedule, but, but you just have to try, you just have to do that because if I don't do that, I'm going to go crazy and my kids won't have a dad right and my my wife won't have a, have a husband so so i'm trying to set some boundaries by you know when i'm working you know i lock myself in the room but i try to come out um whenever possible whenever i have a break then i'll, I'll spend spend a few minutes with the kids you know um we'll, we'll definitely we all we try to have lunch together every day um unless i have a lunch meeting uh which happens quite a bit, but I try to schedule or try to block times off on my calendar. Um, yeah, so, so it's, just, it's just a constant reminder uh, to myself that you know, I need to be present, um, especially during this time right now. And a lot of people don't, don't have a job, so I'm, I'm grateful I have a job, but at the same time, I also need to spend time with my family. Yeah. Like, Jacqueline, you wanna add something there? Yeah, like as a wife, how to support your husband, like he is working at home. The thing is like, well, you have a, like uncontrollable three years old, right? <laughs> so she will hope my little girl will constantly say, oh, where is daddy? Where is daddy? I want to talk to daddy. I want to play with daddy. So I say, now um, daddy, daddy need to earn money to support the family. So we need to let daddy work. If you want toys, you know, <laughs> he has to earn money too so we just need to teach her like i'll oh, set the boundary okay this is a time daddy to work but once daddy is off work we can have some family time 
So just keep her like, but then we all also have concerns that even though like daughter like rush inside the room, we won't like, come, how do you say, uh, flash, flash her? Um, mm -hmm. nah, what do you call um, blink, you know, blink, we, yeah, we won't, we won't, we won't yell at her basically. It's like she would, she would barge in from time to time and it happens. Um, yeah, but, but we, we, we have a mutual understanding that, you know, we're not going to yell at her because of that. Cause she's three years old. She doesn't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, right. Yeah. And then like, or her, uh, he's probably understanding the situation too. So that happens a lot. And everybody, everybody's in the same boat. So, so they all understand. Yeah, so I think um, um, like couples, we need to talk about things. Like something happened, what shall we do? I would tell him like, we have agreement. Well, when Hope come inside the room, I would get her out and then talk to her, try to occupy my little girl. So yeah. other thing like, like I have been like constantly struggle is like whether I shall put Hope in class. Because, you know, three years plus is a, a time for the preschool right so i think oh people are like like talking about that like sending them to the preschool because they need to learn they need to grow online class things like that but then for me it's like okay she's still young you know under this um condition maybe better to keep her at home safely just let her play let her have a childhood you know let her have fun so that's what we do just let her it just basically i have um like a newborn so we just survive day by day <laughs> and counting the grays that's it yeah that's good so what i heard there is leo and jack and you you said you got lock yourself in the room but then you also discipline yourself to come out and designate at times to engage so you disengage intentionally but then you'll intentionally re-engage at specific times so they know there's something they can look forward to Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. I'll come back to you in just a second. But uh, uh, Josh and Mandy, uh, one of the struggles you had mentioned was in managing the increase in distractions, and, uh, and you know, found some solutions in helping with that. Because working from home, obviously, there's, there is an increase with distractions that you maybe you wouldn't have if you were working at the office. So I know you mentioned you have two children as well. They're in, uh, I think, elementary school. So talk to us about that, about the struggle there with the increase in distractions and what you found works. Sure. Um, so I've worked primarily out of the house for probably the past two decades almost. So it, I, I've very much so grown accustomed to my space and kind of that peace and, and quiet and just a sense of order, I guess, if you will, um, and, and just nothing but 100% focus when I so chose. So to have the kids and Mandy um, kind of cohabitate, you know, all throughout the day, it was a fair adjustment for me. Um, definitely, definitely struggled and, and kind of got frustrated in a sense with not being able to get things done the way I wanted to get them done, not being able to give the amount of attention to certain projects and tasks. And eventually I had to just take a step back and realize that um, production is, is not going to be the same and, and to be okay with that. Um, and, and it wasn't any uh, pressure coming from my employer. It wasn't like my boss was putting the screws to me. It was all self-imposed. It, it, it really was kind of my own creation that I had to do things and I had to get them done in a certain timeline and such and, and so forth. So it really, for me, taking that step back and just recalibrating, I guess you could say, my expectations of myself and, and allowing um, some grace to kind of enter the equation was, was really huge for me. And then it, it, at the beginning of the, the shelter in place order, things were in such kind of upheaval. Um, I ended up going to a four day work week. Uh, I talked to my employer and they, they really showed a lot of flexibility in that regard. And, and I became all of a sudden available, available to Mandy to allow her to go to the office, um, available to the kids to to support their distance learning. I mean, whatever was needed for the initial couple weeks, I think of that shelter in place order, I had the freedom to, to dedicate that time to it. So that was, that, that was amazing, quite frankly, like just giving that pass to me, I think initiated that step back and realization that, you know, the world wasn't going to fall. The sky wasn't coming down, like just hang in there, readjust and, and kind of get, get settled a little bit. But that, that was my adjustment. Uh, I mean, for, for me, it was like, 
you know, since Josh had been working from home so long, he had his dedicated space already. You know, the kids and I came in in a flurry and we just set up shop in the living room and the dining room and you know, wherever we could find. And um, I think that the kids had a really hard time in the spring, really hard time just being in a living room. You know, you're at home, you just wanna play and hang out and you're not supposed to be in school. This is what's going on. And then for me, um, for me working at home initially was really hard because when I'm home, I'm, I'm with the kids and they're my, they're my job really. And so it was, I had a lot of trouble keeping up with my workload as well because you know, the kids are on school, they need help. I'm there. I'm going to answer whatever questions I need to. I'm going to, I'm going to put them first just cause that's, that's just what, what I do. And so, um, I found because of that, I started working a little bit more like longer hours and I don't normally work on Fridays for example I found myself putting in hours on Fridays and so um what helped I think to solve that problem for us was just you know trying to train the kids okay guys we're all working we just need to redirect our focus back back to that um and you know summer came and it got a little bit easier because I had a little bit more freedom to just focus on work and the kids, you know, kept busy doing fun things in a sense. And so that, that was fine. But um, another thing too, is we found ourselves since we were together all of the time, <laughs> we could just talk all of the time and, you know, little things that would normally have waited till the end of a work day or the end of the day when we're all back together, we, we find ourselves like I, I run upstairs, hey, Josh, you know, ask him a quick question, which really didn't need to happen then. Um, you know, same, same with Josh, it would come both ways. And so we finally realized, okay, we really have to set a boundary here and say these things, these things can wait, mm -hmm. like let's come together at the end of the day. And these are the kinds of things we can set down during the work hours or school hours and revisit, you know, after hours when we're having dinner or preparing for the evening and, and things like that. So I think that was a big help yeah. <laughs> in realizing that we needed to place a boundary there um, with that distraction. For sure. Yeah. It's interesting. So your story is even unique, a little bit more unique, Joshua. You're saying you are already home and they invaded your space. <laughs> yeah. yes. How dare they? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. And so great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, that, that is definitely a challenge with, you know, the, the lack of those boundaries. It can be a distraction both for work and for family as well. And so setting up those time frames, um, it's just like it's kind of similar to what Leo and Jacqueline are doing with just the, uh, you know, here's the space, here's the time that we'll engage and we'll re-engage later. So, I know that's one thing that Dean and I have found as well. As, um, I know that you guys are going to talk about this too, but just to dedicate it, you know, time and space for that. The challenge you talked about, um, I think it's been really a hard thing for a lot of couples today is, Mandy, you mentioned working more hours um, from home. And I think, yeah, I think that's one thing that people don't always catch with working from home is they think well, what a what a nice convenience that is but it actually can be a great inconvenience because now you don't have that boundary of leaving the office in your car you have a, you know a nice delineation between well i left the office and i also left work i'm going home now now you just you end up you know a lot of couples a lot of people are end up working more hours working from home than they did when they're in the office and so that's good that you found a boundary to set up to help limit that and Josh, um, you mentioned asking your employer for four day work week. I think that's, that, that was a, uh, a creative and bold request. Uh, I think that we shouldn't rule that out. Um, that something, you know, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. If something might work for your family, you know, I think that was, I think we can take a lead from what Josh said there was asking your employer, maybe alternate week, maybe different hours, you know, find something that works and try it for a little while. Doesn't have to be permanent, something you can try. Uh, Leo and Jacqueline, you mentioned that um, in one of the, the challenges you have is three generations and one home, and everybody's home with you know learning and working and living, and you have you have seems like space is is a challenge to fit this all in. How have you talk about that challenge and, and the solutions that you have found for that? 
if you want to. Mm, for example, if I need to pray, I would just stay inside the room. <laughs> like, okay, just, I, I just tell my little girl, oh, mommy need to pray. Uh, mommy need some quiet time. So then she will be with grandma and I will take the little one because the little one is like easier or sometimes more difficult, all depends the situation, but, and I just keep the little one. Um, what about? And I think it's, it's just, it's just hard with three generations um, in general, I think, um, especially during lockdown where you're all in the, in the house 80% of the time, right? So now I think what we, again, what we have to do, I think the key word is, is you have to, you have to kind of constantly or consciously remind yourself, you need to kind of carve out some time and some space um, just for, for us. Right. So we would, sometimes we would take like walk um, during the, like at, at, around that time around our neighborhood, just like we didn't have to, but we, we, we deliberately did that just so that we can, we can have a little bit of space. Mm -hmm. So we would talk about ourselves, you know, we can we chat, we can play with the kids a little bit outside, my daughter can run around, uh, instead of, you know, having, having all that people uh, within a confined space. So that's, that's been helpful. Uh, and, and especially, so we, we live with my mom, and my mom's very, it's, she's kind of a, she's a super introvert. So, so lockdown isn't, isn't too bad for her, because she's, she's home all the time anyway. Um, but but at least for us, it's, it's it's has been difficult. So we just we just need to, again, like just carve out time and space for for our family. Um, and sometimes like yeah. yeah, like we sometimes we go out on the weekend. Um, now that you know we're a little bit more used to this this whole lockdown thing. So like tomorrow, for example, we're we're going out um, social distance. Um, gathering with with uh, a couple more families so we go out to the park you know we'll just let the kids run around a little bit and we'll just sit six feet apart and chat <laughs> picnic like they have like, their picnic. own space and i have our own space but just meeting yeah them. just trying to come up with creative ways to 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 do some stuff as a family right um and just to, and also give my mom some some space. I mean, I, I I'm I'm sure she wants her own space. So sometimes she would go into her room and and never return. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I haven't seen her in like two hours. She's like, she's in her, you know, she's in her room, like on YouTube or whatever. So I'm like, okay, I think she needed her her own space as well. So mm -hmm. we'll try to work around that and, and figure it out. So it's it's it hasn't been easy, but we're we're tr figuring it out. And we encourage our mother, my mother-in-law, like to go outside, like or uh, like once or twice a week, like just walking outside by herself. Like, just take a walk, you or know. just driving. Or take a drive. Yeah, you know, drive for thirty minutes. I mean, like her her car would die because she hasn't dri driven in like two months, right? Like, so I'm like, you know what? Just 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 take a drive every every once a week. Yeah, you know, like you don't you don't really need to go anywhere, but hey, just drive around. You know, see the sun, <laughs> right? And and instead of just being in, in the house all the time, that's really good. One of the best tricks I found was just to get a break from all the people in the house. I would go do an errand, and it would end quickly. I would find myself just parked in the driveway, <laughs> even just in silence, and just even if it's just sitting there dazing off or getting on the phone. I mean, that I really found that to be a pretty quality space. You know, nobody knows your home yet. I don't open the garage. I'm hoping that the dogs aren't giving me away by barking. Um, but uh, it's just the best kept secret. And I even share it with George, and sometimes I invite him to go. I guess it's not a secret anymore now that you've <laughs> told <it's all> everybody. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it's just that silence is golden, you know, just having that, that, that space. Mm -hmm. yeah, we came home the other day from an errand and we found ourselves sitting in the car with the <laughs> engine running and neither one of us were going for the door handle. <laughs> and we hadn't talked about it ahead of time, but it was just, a, you know, it was a little bit of a quiet. You know, you know what's our, our date night has become? Uh, it's grocery shopping. <laughs> we would, <laughs> we would um, this is what we would do. We would be like, "Hey, mom, can you watch the kids for you know for for an hour? We we gotta go get groceries. Like, we need we need to go right now." And mom was like, okay. So, we, and then as soon as we stay out of the house, we're like, <sighs> right. 
Right. Let's go on a date. Let's go on a grocery shopping date. (laughs) Costco is great for date night. You you know, we're right there with you. That's good. Well, that's good. Thank you, Leo and Jacka, for sharing that with the the space, being aware and get, get out of the house. I think, you know, I think for a while we were afraid of some things, but we, we just needed to be creative in how we did those things. Creative, you know, we can, we can creatively social distance. I mean, we as a church, have found ways to creatively, you know, abide by the county guidelines and still, you know, gather together now with our drive-in church. That was a, you know, creative solution uh, by Pastor Frank. And so finding ways to creatively create those boundaries and, you know, a little bit of normalcy and encouraging. And I would say this, I think it's important to not um, criticize or judge somebody if they want their space, whether that's a family member or even your spouse may, you know, now, maybe your spouse needs their space. And so, you know, let them have their space too. They, they need a break from you too. I'm sure a dean needs a break from me once in a while. So, yeah. Never. <laughs> yeah, good. Next question for Josh and Mandy. Um, you mentioned that uh, you have, you know, two children who are in school and, and they, they um, are not identical. They have different learning styles and different needs, and you've had to, you know, apply two different ways to of of helping them to succeed. Talk about that struggle and and what you've done or what you found is working right now. Yeah, my, my hat goes off to Mandy because she was really the one that, that kind of picked up on this, and, and she talked about it earlier. Where the the experience for us over the spring versus the fall has been really night and day. And initially in the spring. Um, our, I think it was our daughter that really struggled yeah. other way around. Yeah. It was our son that struggled and, and our daughter that, that seemed to be just fine and, and kind of adjusted and acclimated much more readily. And, and Mandy kind of picked up on some of those cues and, and figured out what it was. It was kind of the difference, right? Yeah. I mean, Dominic, it's so interesting. He's the older one, but mm-hmm. I guess when you talk about birth order, it's actually no surprise, but um, he required a lot of handholding. Um, the Zoom meetings, he's, 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 um, he's a big introvert as well, and like his mom. Um, and so the Zoom meetings, he would get off a Zoom meeting and he would be physically tired. I mean, it just drained him just trying to be on in that way. And, um, and so he required a lot of, of hand-holding too. They, they'd Zoom all your, here's your work, go do it. And then he'd be just lost and, and struggled really really bad and that's why it was it took me a lot it took me away from work a lot just because I was having to sit and walk through everything with them and so we we ended up actually um sort of just creating a a to-do list for him and so we sat together after his first you know meeting they did much less Zoom meetings in the spring it was all pre-recorded actually uh most of it and so after his meeting we sat down and we made a to-do list for him and so he was able to work off of that. And I think it really helped him to just, um, you know, so just to get his mind wrapped around what he needed to do. And and it wasn't just all jumbled in the air Mm -hmm. for him. So that really helped him. Um, And now in the fall, it uh, had hats off to their teachers. It's been amazing. And they've done such a great job with organizing that for him. We were really concerned about going into the fall. He did not want to do distance learning and he's, He's flourishing. It's amazing how night and day it is. And um, just so grateful for, for all that the teachers did over the summer. We were so um, kind of worked up over his aversion yeah. to distance learning and reintroducing it in the fall. Yeah. There, there was a, a stint where we were looking to relocate to a different area that had less restrictions. I mean, it was that, that severe yeah. and intense. And we were just kind of grasping at straws, looking for alternative solutions and such. And, you know, even... You know, that's kind of the, the gist of the, the general take on things. But even in the throes of a day, they can have different needs in that very moment. So just being conscious and present and just aware and attuned to what they're looking for or what they're lacking or what they're not getting and such like that. That's a full time job in and of itself, quite frankly. And like like Leo and Jacqueline, we, you know, when when their daughter runs in the room, you, you, you can't yell at them. I mean. It's hard sometimes, especially when our, ours are a little bit older. They they might you know they should know better on certain things, but but in this time, I mean, we're all just learning so much about 
ourselves and how we operate. And it's just recognizing, okay, how am I going to respond to this? And, you know, we don't always do it perfectly. Probably more often than not, we don't. But um, trying to be mindful in the moment. Okay, what, why is this child having a hard time? What do they need? And how can I help? Um, all the while trying to do, you know, your own job. It's, it's tricky. Yep. I'm sorry. Our dog is being annoying. Oh, no. We locked ours upstairs. Yes, yes we did. Hold <laughs> on. She's the biggest offender. <laughs> She's about to start howling, so I, I preempted it. So, but, uh, yeah, so it's definitely a challenge. We have three boys, and they are all very, very different. Even though they're college age, they all learn differently. And, um, you know, we had to uh, also, you know, set up the environment for success. So you guys mentioned um, also environment was really important for you guys and, and some things that you've done. Um, you wanted to quickly talk about that, Josh and Mandy and, and um, you know, Leo and Jacqueline, maybe you can, you know, if you've done some things with your environment as well to, you know, help set up the success of, of boundaries at home or, you know, success of your child learning at home. Um, share some ideas with that for environment. So for us, um, I know we mentioned how we were just kind of piled into the living room and the dining room. We, we're in a townhouse. It's, what, 1,100 square feet. We don't have a lot of room um, to all four be here all the time. And um, as we approached the fall and the starting of school and it became a reality that, yeah, you're not going back, you know, um, we again started exploring our options. And we, I fought this one, but in the end decided that I agreed it was a good idea. So um, we actually ended up converting our garage into a, a classroom, if you will. And that's where we're sitting right now at my desk. So, um, I'm down here with the kids. I've got my own workstation. The kids have their own workstations. You know, the kids were involved in some of the things we said, okay, this is your classroom. What, what do you want? To, what do you want in it? What do you see? What do you envision? And so, you know, we've got like a little reading nook and, and some beanbag chairs and we've got like a, you know, they both wanted this U-shaped table. I think it's in every classroom. And so they like, we have to have <laughs> yeah. it. We found one on Facebook Marketplace for really cheap. And so we, it's, by the grace of God, we're able to create this learning space for them. And it's separate from our living space. It's separate from their bedrooms. Um, it's, it's school. And, you know, it's so funny because we thought, okay, at the end of the school day, we all go upstairs, it's done. They love it and they never want to leave. We, we're like, where's the kids? They're down here reading or, you know, playing a game. And it's, it's been really just amazing. And it, it really builds up a sense of excitement yeah. um, to, to segue right into to what otherwise would have been a pretty sad situation of going back to distance learning. Yeah. And to, to have the excitement of a, a fresh room, everything's brand new. I mean, it, they're, they're, they, their eyes really lit up over the entire process. I mean, they're, they're in the garage painting the walls, you know, putting up some of the desks and stuff. I mean, it was a, a three-week uh, ordeal for us to turn this space into what it is today. But it, it was rewarding in so many ways, yeah, and, for sure. And, you know, I, I realize not everybody has the space to do that, but I would encourage people if they haven't already done it, even if it's just a small space in the living room, if that's what it has to be, just the space for, for them to learn and to go to and be, this is my school and, and this is where I go to learn. And then when I'm done, I can separate myself. Um, I just highly encourage it. It's been huge. And I think our kids success. Yeah, yes. game changer for yeah. sure. Nice. Great idea. <laughs> Yeah, we've done something similar to, uh, not to that extent, but um, but we we kind of carved out a space for uh, for hope. Um, obviously, our, our our son is too young for that right now; he's only uh, six months. But so we carved out a little reading space. We we bought a little table and a few, you know, some kids' chair for her. This is where like that area is where she does her her craft. Uh, sometimes she does draw like painting and drawings there uh, with mommy and grandma. Um, and we also carved out a, um, a books corner, right? Yeah. It's like, we, we bought, we bought furniture. So like we bought a lot of things, um, just to create a space for her, um, have her own little, little spot where she, she does things. And I've, I've done some upgrade on my own too. I bought a setup desk, uh, cause I know I'll be spending the next 
six, seven months and, and you know, at home might as well, you know, get some upgrades. So, so yeah, I got some new monitors and new desks and things like that, just to, just to make it, make it a little bit easier. Right. Yeah. And I think certainly having carving out a space for, uh, for hope has, has been helpful. Yeah. Environment's really important for those boundaries. We, we, you know, finding a space in your house, I think is a great thing that you could say, this is work. This is family. Yeah, no matter how big your house is, I think everybody can find some dedicated space. Um, we took our eating area and we turned it into our, our workspace. Mm -hmm. And we just had to move the table out of there. And that's just where, you know, Dean and I are both working from home and, and that's our dedicated space. We used to have it in our bedroom and that really blurred the lines, you know, you, yep. the room and it just wasn't great. So we, we eventually moved it down. So think about environment, think about, you know, get creative about space. I mean, you know, it's a place in the garage. If you have a garage, um, you know, a place in your kitchen, a uh, place in your know, living space, maybe it's a bedroom, maybe you double up the kids in a room so they can be a dedicated room just for, you know, learning or for work. And I think thinking about the environment and the boundaries there can really help to delineate when you're working or studying and when you're having family time. So, uh, we are at the 7.15 mark, and I want to be done by 7.30. And so we're going to um, have the Q&A session. Um, uh, Cassie, I believe that that pops up on the screen, right? And so I did prepare a teaching, but um, uh, I'm going to run through it really quick. And so uh, I know, Cassie, you don't need to put the slides up on this. I'm just going to talk real quick. But I just want to encourage our, our participants, if you have a question you want to ask to uh, Leo and Jacqueline, um, you can go ahead and put that up um, uh, during the question and answer time right now, and it'll kind of queue up as well as you can direct it to Josh and Mandy, or you can just make it general. And then uh, we'll come back after I finish this brief teaching. I mentioned in our advertisement that we um, uh, we're going to be doing boundaries in marriage. And I believe I put in there a book by Cloud and Townsend called Boundaries in Marriage. It's uh, been around for a while. We've did, we did a, a Sunday school class on it, I don't know, about 10 years ago. And, uh, but it's a great book. It's based upon their original book, just boundaries that, you know, didn't matter if it was just marriage, but all of us need to set boundaries in every area of our life. And the whole premise of the book, which I love is an illustration they talk about, which is a, a property line fence. Many times you spend a lot of time focusing on the um, other person's property outside of their fence, meaning we focus on, you know, either our spouse, like, oh, the things they're doing wrong or, you know, our work, Oh, what our work is doing wrong. And that's outside of our property line. And we only can work on the things inside of our property line. And we should, you know, focus there most of our energy, if not all of our energy, because that's the only area that we can control. And so they talk about six values that we should have. And we talked about, I think a lot of these and the ideas that we shared here, um, ideas for, you know, how we can navigate through shelter in place. One of the values that they said we should not strive for is happiness. Don't strive for, for the value of happiness because you'll be disappointed. And if you strive for happiness, you'll actually um, stop a process that might bring greater joy or growth in your life. Because if you only want to be happy, you won't ever go through a difficult time. We're all going through difficult times right now, but we're going to be better for it on the other end. The first thing that, that Cloud and Townsend talk about is that you need to um, love the Lord. Make sure that you love God and make that your number one priority. Make it a value in everything that you do. I'm just going to love God no matter what struggles we have in our life. Mark 12, 30, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You can get through any challenge if you'll just focus on God and encourage your spouse to focus on God, even if you don't have the answer. Just remember that no matter what, no matter how difficult things get, no matter how disappointed I am, I'm going to focus on my love for God. The second value they talk about having is love your spouse. Make sure that you love them unconditionally. And they use the word agape, their unconditional love, like God loves you and I. If you'll make it a value that, hey, I'm going to love my spouse. Um, and then, you know, if they need space, you'll give them space. Um, if you ask for space, um, they'll show unconditional love towards you and give you space. If you need to have a difficult conversation about how boundaries are being crossed, you can do that with love because you love each other. No matter what, always know that you're going to love each other unconditionally, and that'll help you get through all of those uh, just 
those challenging times. The third value they talk about is honesty, to be honest with each other and to, to not withhold a difficult conversation, but to do it with grace and with love. Remember, we talked about loving your spouse as a value, but be honest with each other if something is a challenge for you. Be honest if you do need space. Be honest if you need to, to buy some equipment and you have to, even though it might not be within the budget. You know, don't, just because it's a difficult conversation, um, make sure that you have that because honesty is really important. And, and if you are an introvert, that might be a little bit hard for you to do and you end up exploding on your spouse later. And so, you know, it's good to be honest and to uh, make sure that's a value that you have. Faithfulness. They said, be faithful to one another. And this, many times we think it's only sexual faithfulness, but we need to value emotional faithfulness to our spouse. We need to value intellectual faithfulness to our spouse as well. Be faithful to your spouse. Follow through on the things that you said you're going to do. Um, you know, if you made a promise, make sure you stick with that and help each other through those things. The fifth value is compassion and forgiveness. This is an important one because um, uh, as a reminder, nobody who is on this call today is perfect. I'm not perfect. Uh, you know, Jacqueline said earlier, oh, is a little bit, you know, nervous to pray for you. I'm just a person and I'm not perfect. And, and a dean's not perfect. And so we're, I'm going to let a dean down. She's going to let me down. Jacqueline's going to let Leo down. Leo's going to let Jacqueline down. Mandy's going to let Josh down. Josh is going to let Mandy down. It's going to happen because we're not perfect. We need to be compassionate and remind ourselves they're not perfect. Only Jesus was perfect. And let's be graceful as well. Let's make sure that we forgive because we know they're not perfect. And that's, that's something that we should value during this time. And then the last one is holiness, is this last value. And this is, means that we are all on a process. We're all in a process of becoming whole. And I don't know if, if everybody in here has seen the movie Jerry Maguire with Tom Cruise and, and Renee Zellweger, but there's a really famous line at the end of the movie where Jerry Maguire goes to Renee Zellweger's house and he says, you complete me. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I, I've tried to say that to Dean and it, it doesn't always land like it did in the movie, but I've heard a lot of other couples say that line like, oh, I, I, this person is per my spouse is perfect for me because they complete me. Well, if we value holiness, um, then we won't, we will have a difficult time saying that our spouse completes us because the reality is, is that we need to be complete all in our set within ourselves. We have to individually be complete and God has every one of us on a process to being complete. And that's what valuing holiness means is that I know that I'm not done yet. God's not done with me yet. I'm still growing. And marriage is probably the most perfect relationship to bring out all of your faults, to highlight all of the areas where you are immature or where there might be sin in your life that God needs to deal with. In the marriage relationship, those things will come to light like no other relationship that you have. God will use marriage to help you to mature and to grow and to become holy. And so that's why at the beginning we said happiness can't be a value that we have because many times in marriage we won't be happy, but that very situation is going to cause us to become holy if we'll embrace the process if we'll confess our, our sins, confess our faults, and allow God to grow us. And so those are the six, uh, the six values there that are in the Boundaries and Marriage book by Cloud and Townsend. Highly recommend uh, that you pick up that book. All right, the Q&A session. Uh, let's see. It says, let them know they can find the Q&A box in the bottom bar. Got it. So... I'm going to pop open the Q&A box here and see which ones we have. No open questions right now. Any comments as we allow any questions to come up there? Um, Josh and Mandy, Leo and Jacqueline about the values or about anything else that we talked about today. I, I love what you touched on when you at the beginning when you said don't strive for happiness because it's been kind of 
that's been heavy on me lately. I'm just like, mm. I go through days, I'm just like, I'm not happy. <laughs> like, and so that gives me a lot of perspective. So I really mm. just appreciate hearing that. Yeah, finding individual completeness in the Lord struck a chord with me as well. That, that, that's, that's a huge statement. Oftentimes I can lean on Mandy to fulfill a need. Um, I should just be, I should be just as ready to lean on the Lord for, for some of that as well. So it's a two way street. <clears throat> yeah, same for me. Um, I think, you know, I think, I think in a way our, our spouses complete us, but we need to have that self completeness because uh, it's, it's, she's never going to fill every single need that I have. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I would add in that it's, it's, um, that's a really heavy expectation put on our spouse that they would complete us in an area where only God can complete us. But it happens regularly in every marriage. We often put the expectations that only God can fulfill. We put them on our spouse and then they disappoint us. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, not, it's not fair to our spouse. And it also, I, I don't think it really pleases the Lord that much because we should be. Mm-hmm. I think we go through, we, I mean, for us, I think we go through that struggle earlier in our marriage, the first couple of years. You know, it's, 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 it was rough. I mean, it was rough, particularly rough for her because she moved to a new country. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so she, there are a lot of things that she had to depend on me, right? And I think I've, I've let her down numerous times. So it's, it's just not, it's just, it wasn't, it just wasn't a real, like a realistic expectation, right? Right. So I think, um, you know, so, so we, we kind of learned it the hard way too. I think um, for me, the most important thing is like not change him, like not to change him to the person that I want him to be. But instead, like, I just pray, like, Lord, what should I be changed? Like, Mm -hmm. what new perspective I need to learn? Like, what is the issue inside? Is it him or me? Like, what's the problem? Like, the real problem is him or me? I have, like, too much expectation or the expectation is not right or do I have some projection? So the real need, what is that? Like, yeah. That's good. That's wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, we've... It's a lot. It's it's very easy for you to to mix things together, especially when you're in an argument, right? When you're fighting over something, um, it's easy to point fingers, but it's it's usually it's hard to identify uh, my own issue, right? We, we a lot of times we kind of just lump it all together and we explode it, but but it's the, the it's the more um, the harder question and the question that we should be asking, uh, like my wife said, is, is, is what, it's what, what is my issue? Like, is it a false expectation or am, am I, am I projecting something that from my past onto my spouse right now, mm-hmm. um, that's caused this conflict and argument. And, and I think we, we got a few questions there too, Pastor George, uh, on, on the Q and A. Yeah, we do. It looks like uh, the first question we have, it says, what are your communication strategies for when boundaries get broken? And mm-hmm. Josh and Manny, why don't you take that one? <laughs> the, the first thought that comes to me is, you know, retreat to our separate corners, right? When, when, when there's a heated exchange or a moment, um, at least for me, especially, I, I know I need to remove myself out of the situation just to kind of regain um, a, a calm sense of, of intent and, and just a level headedness in, in, in a way. Um, so finding where those dedicated spaces are, are pretty huge. Um, for me, it, it's outside, usually exercising. So if, if, if we have the need or if a boundary has been crossed, I typically skedaddle for a, a quick minute and, and come back and, and just kind of reassess and re-engage when you're on, on level ground. Yeah. I mean, same thing. I, I, um, just my personality is I tend to just shut down and I, I kind of just stop. And so in order for me to be able to process anything and to have a valuable discussion over what the problem was, I, I too need to have my own time and to just, just process that and gather my thoughts and my feelings. And um, then, you know, usually, and, and frankly, sometimes it takes a few days before we can come back to it, honestly. No, I, and, I was going to say something about that. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it's hard, but it's okay mm-hmm. because, I don't know, in a strange way, sometimes the longer we're able, I'm able to process my yeah. feelings, the, the more I understand them and the better I can communicate them. 
Yeah, strategy sounds so amazing and wise, quite frankly, but sometimes we just come back at each other, try to re-engage, still didn't go so well, separate again, come back again. Like it's just kind of back and forth situation, but uh, I don't know if I call it a strategy, but it, it definitely works for us. Yeah, yeah I, would add, I, would, I would just add that that falls in with the value of loving your spouse un unconditionally and that your spouse um, knows that you're never gonna leave no matter what challenge you have, you're going to work through it. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. if you know, I think that's a, that that helps you through any challenging situation, is like, hey, my spouse isn't leaving. Yeah. You know, right. It might take us a week to work through this. It might take us six months to work through this. We're here for the rest of our life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Can we add something? Um, so I think it's it's uh, my wife said it perfectly. Um, it's, it's more important to, to communicate your need, like whether it's emotional need or physical need to your spouse than actually pointing at, at the facts, like, like what, what happened, right? For example, like you, you barge into the room without, without knocking, right? Well, that's an incident, but what is the, the need or the emotion related to that incident behind, like what's hidden behind the incident, right? That's more important. Because without satisfying or communicating, talking through that deeper part, um, those incidents, it's always, it's, it's, it's always going to happen again, right? So I think, I think that's, that's also a good um, communication strategy. I just give a very, um, like, very common example. Like, okay, if he works too much again, and I'm busy in the kitchen, and then I would yell, like, maybe I'd get angry, right? But instead... <laughs> yelling at him or like being frustrated there is a need inside of me i need help i feel helpless because i'm too busy i'm like doing everything she's drowning i'm <laughs> drowning i need some help i need help <laughs> so instead of like yelling to him the strategy is talk over it so honey um i need help i'm too overwhelming okay it's dinner time i need to feed the baby you know uh, i, I have to i need to cook i need to serve i need some help can you please come to help then this way like solve the problem and then he will like gladly to help and then i can praise him oh honey you're so good you're such my hero you help me she's really good at that <laughs> by the way <laughs> that's that's really helpful too and then praise him like in front of the kid see that he did a good job <laughs> and he's a hero. He can fix anything. That's great. We all need a little praise from now and then. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. I think most husbands would like to be called a hero. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That's funny. I have another question I see. It says, uh, we don't have children yet, but what's some advice you would give a married couple who's waiting for children? Hmm. That's a pretty heavy one for us. I, I don't know if Mandy's thinking of the same story, but um, when we first started talking about children, um, we were very intentional. I, we, we pulled out the calendar, looked at uh, what month didn't have any current birthdays or holidays to interfere with. I mean, we got hyper overthought into this process and then tried to build nine months back from that and really specifically aim for, for that birth month. And I think by happenstance, we came pretty close the first time around. And unfortunately, we had a miscarriage on that, that first go around. And neither one of us had much insight into miscarriages and such. But if, if we had to distill that down to a bit of advice, I would say don't overthink it. Um, take it in stride and just let the Lord kind of have his way with you. Um, the, the miscarriage ended up being a blessing for us. I think it was one of my most deeply rooted spiritual seasons because we had to lean so heavily into the Lord mm -hmm. during that process. But um, yeah, I would say don't overthink it. Just take it as it comes and really just invite the Lord into every breath that you can. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's, it's all about trusting in the Lord's timing because our timing, it's just right. not perfect, but, but his is. And um, as Josh did, I, also, I mean, we just both worked through so much in that time, and it was, um, it's huge. It was a, it was a blessing, and, it and it's weird to say that now, but but it was, and, um, and you know, we, we were able to then 
go on to have two children who um, just bless us every day. Um, I don't know what else. That, that's, but, that's huge to me. The, I, the, we, I'm go sorry. Ahead. I was going to say just the, the other story um, that I was thinking of is, um, is expect things to be different once your children come. Mm. Um, I changed. I, I mean, tremendously. I changed a great deal, and I was I was caught off guard. So expect things to change. I mean, I know it sounds silly to say that because because duh, there's a child now. But but just me and myself change. I mean, Josh and I, when Dominic was six months old, he's our first. We started to go to marriage counseling. I mean, we just we just we had to. We needed help. We didn't have and a choice. It saved our marriage, and so just um, just. Be putting open. our marriage, you know, putting our marriage as a priority. Mm -hmm. So don't forget your spouse when your child comes because yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, For us, I think um, like before you have kids, just enjoy your time with each other. <laughs> enjoy the moment. You got nothing, nothing like that afterwards. <laughs> Yeah. At least for a few years. Oh. Yeah. I think um, for me, um, to answer this question is like, what is the intention that you want a kid? Because people have kids, you want a kid, because you want the kids to, you know, like to form the you. family to complete yourself or something else. Like the intention is like, for me, it's important. Because after having a kid, it's not like he is going to complete you. He is going to be the tool to train you. Maybe that's something like God wants you to change in your life or something you want to learn. Like sometimes it might be hard, I would say. Yeah, like to be patient, to be unconditionally loved. Yeah. Things like that. I mean, um, yeah, just enjoy yourself and like no matter, I, I think pray about it. Like let God tell you what is the intention. That's important for me. Sure. And just um, trust God, give the best, and he will give the best at the right timing. We have been waiting like for a few years. We have bitterness in our heart before, and then we, like, we talk about it, like why we want to have kids. Some people, like some couples, they want to, the, to have the kid to hold the husband or to hold the wife, like, sure. to, have, like, like to give people like a bad picture, like a family, yeah. you know, Having, try, try, try to use kids to save your marriage. doesn't work. It worked quite the opposite. <laughs> um, and can I, can I, can I also add something? So I think, I think for me personally, um, while we were waiting, it's actually a time for me to, for God to prepare me to be a father. Mm -hmm. And that process never, I mean, I'm still in that process um, every day. But because of my, my family background, you know, I, I grew up in a broken family. My dad was, you know, distanced. Um, so I didn't, I didn't know how to be a father. Like, I didn't know what being a father looks like because he was never there. And I had some father figures in my, in my life, but somehow they were all pretty, like, really broken people. So, so having, you know, when, when you... you you see movies and TV series and when, when, when the kids are born, like the father was crying, they hold the baby. You know, when, when my daughter was born, I actually froze. Because mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the nurse gave, it, gave, gave hope to me, you know, it's like, oh, hold your daughter. I, I hold her, I froze. I was like, what am I supposed to do with her? I didn't, I, I was freaking out, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what I, when, you know, it's been three and a half years, I look back, it's, it's the time where you know we were wait our our wait was actually a way for God to prepare me, and also after our daughter was born, we waited three years um, before our son arrived, and that three years was also a great preparation for me, because uh, I learned how to be a father from from my daughter, right? I learned how to play with kids, um, I learned how to be creative because I never never had that going up. I was I was an only child, so I never had any siblings. Uh, so I didn't know, I had no idea how to play with kids whatsoever. So that, that, those waiting period actually helped me um, to, to be a better father. So I think, you know, you can also, I just want to bring another perspective. Sure. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to our panelists for being so transparent with your stories. Um, 
that was really kind of you to share your stories. And I know those stories, you know, have a lot of emotion with them and a lot of vulnerability there. Yeah, but I really believe that they help uh, uh, help the people who are watching. And I want to thank those who are sticking with us. I know we've got quite a few who are still with us. We're about 10 minutes over. We're going to close in prayer in just a moment. I just wanted to make sure I share my appreciation for that. Mm-hmm. I know it took a while for us, Adina and I, to have children. And then hearing other people tell their stories about that struggle helped us through that as well. And so that's been kind of the whole point of today's webinar is um, everybody watching today, you're normal. The struggles you're going through, um, you're not alone on those struggles. Other people are having those struggles and difficulties um, in their marriage, uh, with their parenting, uh, with working from home. A lot of these struggles, you're not alone and, um, and you can find help. Uh, you can contact you know, me at the church and, uh, and if you had questions that you wanted to direct towards, you know, uh, Leo and Jacqueline or, or Josh and Mandy, just send me those messages and, and I'll make sure and get those over to them. But most importantly, I just want you to be encouraged. Your struggles are, are not unique to you. Other people are having those same struggles and other people have found solutions for those struggles as well. And they can be a help for you too. So just want you to know you're not alone and to be encouraged today. So I've asked the Dean if she would close our time in prayer today and pray for um, all those who are watching on our, our panel, uh, on our webinar today as, as, uh, as attendees. So, Dean. Lord, we thank you for this special time together that uh, you were able to bring us together, even though it's just in this unconventional way. Uh, Lord, it's always so, such a great feeling to know that we can feel your presence always. Uh, Lord, I pray that as we leave this meeting that that your presence would continue to be felt so strong with the people that are um, here tonight, Lord. We pray for your continued guidance through this time. We pray for your continued peace in our homes. Lord, I pray um, that our homes would just be filled uh, with your love. Lord, as we seek you first and foremost for direction in, in each of our lives that are probably look so unique to each and one every one of us. Lord, I just pray um, that you would continue to bless the weekend. Lord, I pray that those that are with us would find rest in you, that they would find rejuvenation in you, Lord. And I pray that, Lord, when we feel discouraged, that we would find our strength in you, precious Lord, in your word. And as we um, still time away to turn to you in prayer and for guidance, Lord, that we will find uh, the answers that we're searching for, Lord, because we are not alone. We thank you for being everything that we need. Um, and meeting us right where we are. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Adine. Thank you again, Leo and Jacqueline and Josh Amen. and Mandy for uh, participating with the panelists tonight. Really appreciate that. Cassie, thank you for running the show from behind the scenes there. And, uh, and also just want to let all of our participants know we will have another marriage webinar coming up in about three months. Yeah. And that one's going to be on finances in marriage. And so um, if, uh, if you're not independently wealthy, I would plan on putting that on your calendar <laughs> and maybe you might, might learn something there as well that can help you in your marriage. So thank you guys so much. Enjoy the rest of your Friday evening. Bye everyone. Sure has been Bye, fun. Everyone.